to be here, alhamdulillah, to listen to brothers and sisters and uh, get really, in cases, a kind of uh, positively disappointed, not expecting from this brother to give such a great speech, insightful, or that sister, such a wonderful speech, and really having a feast of beautiful speeches. And for that reason, really, I was reluctant whether to come here or not. <laughs> maybe I'm just uh, be taking your time for maybe something not worth of talking. I don't know, I want to start with something funny. And here it is. She talks very emotionally. <laughs> and uh, I like children. <coughs> And I am a child too. <laughs> I like children because they speak up their minds without really mask. Sure, it may hurt, but children's words do not hurt because they don't have the power to hurt us, to harm us. We are not intimidated by them. We can disregard, we can ignore. But there is something virtue in that. Yahya, for example, uh, Senobar called our home and uh, Senobar wanted to talk with me and uh, Yahya told Senobar, says, I don't like you, Senobar. I love it. I wish, I wish I had that sincerity, that honesty, that I love all of you, really with no doubt, but I don't like some people. In fact, I recently I learned this, the, 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 the difference between like and love. And uh, I wish we were able to tell each other I don't like you and sit down why I don't like you, why you don't like me. Well, I told you that. <laughs> Another kind of uh, children's question is questioning things without fear of getting blamed. Less peer pressure, it seems, in certain ages. For example, recently my son asked questions about God. And uh, one day, he, sure, he gets information and now feedback reaction to the information says, Daddy, God created everything? Yes. Me? Yes. Trees? Mountains? His dog, everything. And then the following question is, why God created bad guys? <laughs> Believe me, I don't have an answer to you. I said, when you grow up, you will learn. <laughs> Another thing, he was, uh, we, are, we are encouraging him to pray with us. And one day, he met people in Mesha Tucson, they know this story that I told them. This is a repetition. And then uh, he was praying with, the, he was trying to pray with his shoes on. And then uh, his mother told him, yeah, yeah, don't pray with your shoes on. He says, no, I will pray my shoes on, it's okay. He says, no, because God says you cannot pray with your shoes on. His answer says, no, I didn't hear God saying that. <laughs> Great, I didn't hear God saying that, you are making up. 
possible. <laughs> anyway, I believe <coughs> to be together in a religious community and having intimate relation and not having trouble in communicating with each other, it is impossible because religious communities are open communities. This is not an engineer club, which everybody <coughs> has square mind engineer. Or this is not a kind of philosopher club. Everybody has skeptical viruses in their mind. Everybody questions without answers. This is a religious group which open to every kind of people. People from all cultures, all background, all level of education, all level of understanding, even open to mentally sick people, even open to hypocrites, even open to disbelievers maybe. For that reason, probably it will be highly, a high expectation to expect trouble-free communication or argument-free days in conferences, I believe. Because we are all different, the information that we get is the Quran, we don't just exact get the information. We select the information first. By this way, each person selects different information, different combination of verses, different emphasis, and uh, we analyze differently. We have a lot of assumptions in our mind. Previously, we accumulated. Some of them never questioned those assumptions. We have different way interpretation. We have different wishes, desires, interests, different agendas, and all add to our understanding. For that reason, there will be diverse understanding of the same translation of the same Quran or original Quran. We shouldn't be highly expect that everybody uniform will be just uh, like military, everybody will be the same. No. But in order to reduce the diversity, to make coherent, to create a kind of consistent community, there must be open way of communications. We must encourage it, sure, in best way. But when we stop it, communicating differences, when we raise our eyebrows to a person ask some question, speaks his mind like a child, we put a wall in front of accumulating questions. It creates a dam and one day may explode. And I believe conferences must be a way to communicate things, not one by one, sometimes sit down together, discuss if there are issues, not to create issues, but I believe there are different issues, there are different approaches. And we are human beings and we are weak. Most of the time, we are prejudiced. If a person happens we love that person, speaks a word, a statement, or a person we haven't previously with for some experience we don't like, speaks exactly the same word, we may entirely, we may have entirely different reactions to the same statements just because the persons who spoke those words. That means we are not, when we communicate, when we listen to each other, we are not just analyzing the content of the things. We really pollute the content with our previous prejudice experiences. And knowing this helps us to have a better communication, understanding, inshallah. Also, respecting each other. When I personalize certain issue, I should be reminded by other brothers and sisters, don't make it personal. Because when we personalize, we get emotional, 
we are distracted and we don't see the truth as it is. My other experiences in these conferences, uh, known as the troublemaker of the conferences, thank God. Uh, but uh, I believe there was uh, sometimes uh, wrong treatment on your side, or some people probably didn't speak up. When my words was interrupted, that was okay. When I was insulted by other persons, I didn't see really my brothers and sisters warned that person, why you are making personal insult and attack to this person? He's raising a question. If he has bad intention in his mind, don't mind. Answer the question with a good argument. You will refute his argument and his, himself. But my concern, I have certain concern, because when I look at the history, how religious groups can close their minds to questions. If it is new group, in fact, all the people came through questioning things, questioning norms and traditions. They come to that group, and then they leave their minds slowly put out. In this group, we don't need anymore our mind. We don't need to question. And then flaws, problems, innovations start creeping in from here and there. And with time, no one will have the courage to ask any questions because norms established, group is so powerful, and nobody dares can ask questions, and everything can enter. And all kind of deterioration, distortion start when the last child has been expelled from the community, when everybody is adult with a thick mask on their face, with polite words, hiding the questions in their mind because of fear of pointed as a troublemaker. I want to share several things, to, things with you, and uh, I don't want to share anything that I believe, inshallah, will create controversy. And this conference, I have a resolution that not to talk uh, with something, inshallah, that would hurt anyone. One thing that uh, this will be a kind of potpourri speech means the most disorganized speech. <laughs> this reason, bear with me. And uh, in chapter 19, verse 23, 25, if you open, that there is something that uh, I noticed, but I might be wrong, but uh, I want you to research about it. And uh, it is about Mary. When Mary has uh, birth contractions, pains, there is a sound comes underneath her. Sure, we, uh, we can understand basically Jesus in his in her belly, or maybe sound uh, in different way. I understand maybe angel. Anyway, there is a sound come to her. It says, "It is your Lord provided you with a stream underneath you, and go shake the tree, and eat from the right day. Uh, right day, right? Yeah. Anyway, and then." Uh, Later, I learned that uh, water has a soothing effect on our muscles. When you see the water, automatically your muscles are regulated. And uh, when a human being or an animal has rabies, there is rabies, yeah. And it creates a kind of hydrophobia and uh, also from the light, because light and water, both of them stimulates the muscle, and they have viruses in their muscles, and then it creates pain, because seeing those things. And, but recently, they started using water for uh, in uh, hospitals to have birth, kind of mother, when sees the water, her uh, muscle 
get regulated and the contractions become more regular and smoother and the birth is less painful, uh, painless. And the date later, uh, I learned somewhere in an article, but I'm not really sure about that, inshallah you research. I learned that date has high level of oxytocin in it. And then, once by accident, by chance, I was in Lama's course with my wife, when my wife was pregnant with Yahya, and then I heard the lady over there talking about oxytocin that doctors gave as a medication for, uh, to women when they have labor, before labor, in order to make it easier. And it's really, to me, just ring the bell to the date that has high level of oxytocin in it, and water is one of the best for regulating the muscle. Here Mary has pains, contractions, and God tells her about these two things. There are so many things could be mentioned, but only these two things to me that is significant. And uh, <coughs> there is another thing uh, I want to share with you. In fact, I wrote in one of the little booklets that I said un unorthodox articles uh, about usury. I had a lot of questions about usury or the distinction between usury and interest. What is really that, that God prohibits? If it's the extinction only 20%, 21%, is a kind of, uh, without real clear cut, just uh, uh, distinguishing. I found that trouble, and probably most of you have certain questions about that. And later uh, we're discussing, and I see a very uh, detailed letter on, the, on usury, and uh, it opened up the question, and questions turn out to be challenges for me. And sure, there is one good thing, inshallah, I am learning to hold in my judgment. Holding judgment means to be able to live with ambiguities. To be able to live with some questions in mind. Not to rush, just to answer every question you have. But our tendency is just to find answers so any question that we have, just get relieved, secure. But most of the ans uh, answers that we get, if you rush, will be wrong, and we may get disappointed in our lifetime, or we may get become fanatic. But it is a good experience, inshallah. We learn that we have a problem, we have a question, but we sincerely do answer for that. If we couldn't find a satisfactory answer, okay, God, I am not, I don't have a brain infinite with infinite number of cells. I have a three-pound brain. I have little information. Grab me with some information, inshallah, we'll find an answer for this. Hope I don't find, it doesn't matter because I don't know everything, but the thing that I know is enough for me to worship you alone and to follow Quran alone. And uh, I was discussing with one of my friends in Masjid Tusa, it was uh, Dr. Adi Soma. Oh, he can't. <laughs> Just like was mentioning your name. And he gave me a good insight. God bless him. I didn't know. He knew the answer, that I, answer that I was looking for, for years. And he was, we living together every Friday. We meet each other. This friend of mine, mashallah, keep hiding this valuable answer that I am looking for. I don't know why did you hide that <laughs> so long. And then he told me something, oh my gosh, it really shifted my paradigm, perspective entirely changed, and my questions mostly became irrelevant. And to me, I found really very satisfying answer for my question regarding usury. And God bless him. Okay, after this... Uh, <laughs> oh, I have that. You took the book, you have to find the book. I, I, I don't have much time. I don't want to go. <laughs> no, I, but still, still I keep myself. I might be wrong and uh, in that, but to me at this point, it is it's satisfying one answer, huh? One point, yeah, go ahead, inshallah. If you see something to share with me, add more, I would like to hear from you, inshallah. Here, uh, I have, uh, this is my last uh, 
point, but it may little bit take maybe 10 minutes, probably I have. Uh, three issues, inshallah, I would like to raise and get focused on this. One, uh, to be sensitive towards personal attacks, not, a, not personalizing issues. Personally, I suffered from this, and probably some other people also suffered from this. If someone brings an issue, don't say you are hypocrite, you are liar, you are this and that. This is the cheapest way of argument. Believe me, I can reply with double, with multiple, it is the easiest way you can do that. But I believe that we create certain hard feelings. I'm not saying I am not personalizing this. I also make the same mistake. I personalize things. And for that reason, be aware, inshallah, when we make the things personalized, diverting from the issue, and uh, other brother and sister, when they see it, remind each other. And second, be aware of that this community is most likely repeat the history. I say most likely. And uh, don't get just uh, uh, offended if someone raised the concern about idolization of the messenger in this context, Rashad, which I believe we have uh, kind of, uh, some of us get kind of uncomfortable when some people long say, why well, raise this question? Generally, when we talk about idolization of, idolization, we mean the ones outside of us, Mohammedans or Christians and others. We are immune of this. We got rid of it. And this, in fact, this false assumption, this sense of victory, create exactly the witness that Satan is looking for, attack that time. And after Prophet Muhammad, the same happened. People, they started, they, they fought, they got rid of idolization, and uh, nobody could raise any question. All idolization was about Christians, they would idolize. Jewish people, or idol worshippers, but never Muslims. Never possible to worship Muhammad. If you talk with a Muhammadism, there, is, there are some people worshiping Muhammad. No, never. How can you say? Because uh, the, the mind is open just to criticize others, to look others, not to look at yourself. And uh, I want to read a verse. 3144, inshallah, open the Quran. Muhammad was no more than a messenger, like the messengers before him. Should he die or get killed, would you turn back on your heel? Anyone who turns back on his heel does not hurt God in the least. God reward those who are appreciated. We have and we have agents of reactionism. Agents who want to take us back to repeat the history. Instead of idolization, Muhammad this time, replacing Muhammad with Rashad, replacing hadith with appendices or footnotes or perspectives or video cassette with more technological hadith. And please be, let's be aware Let's know well why we rejected Hadith. Please, we all of us, read the verses just also looking at ourselves, not just criticizing others. Recently I heard several things. One I wrote, uh, I heard, uh, I, I, in fact, I read the printout. One of the brothers, who are delivering the message on the computer, referring to the translation of the Quran as the English version of the Quran. To me, it was very striking. 
a clear deviation from the truth. English version of the Quran, Arabic version of the Quran. If your English is not good enough regarding this word, please look at the dictionary, what does version mean? And I believe we should clarify, talk with each other if you have problems about the, what is the function?